nobody's ever accused me of being a model employee. In fact, people say I'm hard to deal with, and yeah, fine, I'll accept those labels. See, but it doesn't come from a place of just wanting to bitch about things or whine about things. It comes from a place of passion. See, I've found in my life that the people that are the most passionate about something also tend to be the most difficult people to deal with because they just can't stand it when things aren't right, when things are out of place. They just need to say something. They need to speak out. They need to fight the system. I've been a fighter my entire career. See, it just... Doing on it. All night I haven't slept just thinking about the 13th anniversary show and how I wrestled on the pre-show. I wrestled on the pre-show of the 13th anniversary show. And trust me, part of me is flattered. I'm flattered that when Ring of Honor wants to try out new wrestlers, they think of me sort of like a gatekeeper. Like if you can hang with Jimmy Jacobs, you might be able to hang in Ring of Honor. And part of me is flattered by that. But it just eats me up, man. Like somehow it's just been deemed like this is my greatest hits era. Like it's just been deemed like I'm in the twilight of my career. And trust me, that's something I've struggled with, man. It's professional wrestling, this thing that used to build me up. Now it just seems every time I'm out in that ring, I just leave a piece of my heart. I leave a piece of my soul. I leave a piece of my broken body, man. And it hurts. And I struggle with it, man. I struggle with it. I struggle with the fact that the 13th anniversary show, while I was on the pre-show, it ended with Jay Briscoe, the Grand World Champion, face-to-face -face with Samoa Joe. Like, trust me, Nobody's a bigger fan of Samoa Joe than me. I think he is the very foundation which this entire era of professional wrestling has been built on, man. I was there when he went an hour with CM Punk twice. I was there when he wrestled the Necro Butcher in Philadelphia, and I'd like to say I've never seen anything like it, but I was there when he wrestled Kabashi in New York City. I was on that balcony standing right next to Jamie Noble. We were both marking out like little kids, man. Like, like we found our love of professional wrestling again through Samoa Joe, but his very presence in this company does not deem him a number one contender for the Ring of Honor World title. He's not all of a sudden deserving just because he's here to get a Ring of Honor World title shot. Yet that seems to be what the fans are talking about. That seems to be what Nigel McGuinness is talking about. And I'm just not appreciated. Like I'm just taken for granted just because I've been here holding the fort down the entire time to make sure there's a fort for Samoa Joe to come back to. I'm just taken for granted. This year alone, I've had victories in Nashville, Dearborn, Dayton, and Las Vegas, but nobody seems to care because Samoa Joe is back in town, a guy who hasn't had a match in Ring of Honor in years. And they're talking about him and Jay Briscoe. I get it, Nigel. Maybe you want to make the match. Maybe you're going to make the match. I don't know. Maybe you want to get the match out there before Samoa Joe just walks away again. But see, if I'm going to be the gatekeeper in Ring of Honor, I'm going to keep the gate. Fine. I will say it to your face, Jay Briscoe. I will say it to your face, Nigel. And I will say it to your face, Samoa Joe. As much as I think you are great, you do not deserve to stand in the ring at the end of the 13th anniversary show with Jay Briscoe. You do not deserve to put your name in that title contention. Not yet. Not now. I will say to the face of every fan that thinks otherwise in the world and in Baltimore this Saturday. Is this my greatest hits era? Fine. This Saturday, I will make it my greatest hits.